our speaker for today, Heidi Mayer Valentin from Denmark. She is a midwife, an author, a blogger, and a mother of three living in Copenhagen. And she's a self proclaimed birth feminist and has been into midwifery since the birth of her first child in 2002. After giving birth to her second child abroad as an expat in Hong Kong, she worked at an international midwifery clinic and had a passion for breastfeeding and whispering babies. However, after attending her first birth back in Denmark, she realized she had a special sense of birth, which resulted in the development of a pain and relaxation technique called the Mayer Method. Her life is now dedicated to this passion for a better birth experience through partner interaction and the Mayer Method, and it is currently under research in Denmark and will be presented at the ICM in Bali in 2021. So thank you very much to Heidi for joining us today. And we are looking forward to your presentation. Hi, Karen. Is it time for me to go on now? Okay. Yes, that is my cue. Hi there. I am so excited to have this opportunity to present the Maya method at the VIDM conference. And I know my time is limited, so I'll just get straight to business. I hope you will enjoy the presentation and get some inspiration on how to help women cope better with birth. Um, so we all know that fear, tension and loss of control creates pain and complications in labor. The Maya method is a big dive into that pain and grab hold of the birthing woman, helping her gain control, relax her body and promote coping. This presentation will give you the insights for you to begin working with this method as a fantastic tool to ease and promote labor. So my name is Heidi and yes, I'm a Danish midwife. I was born in 1977, so that gives me 43 years. I have been uh, a midwife by heart since I gave birth to my first daughter, Philippa. She was born at a hospital in Copenhagen in 2002. Later on, I lived abroad in the Caribbean and Hong Kong, and I gave birth to my second child, William, in, in a public hospital in Hong Kong. And later on, I worked at this um, international midwifery clinic, Annalie Midwives in Hong Kong. I wasn't um, a trained midwife at this time. I was a CBI doula, and I had a lot of interest in breastfeeding, as Karen also told you. Later on, I... Um, attended midwifery school in back home in Denmark. And um, after I was uh, finished uh, trained midwife, I gave birth to my third child, Nova, at home with a, an amazing pain-free uh, water birth. Um, so later on, I worked at um, a private midwifery clinic in um, Copenhagen called the Stork Nest. And I had a lot of opportunity to work on my method and write my book, which I finished in 2018. And since then, I have been uh, very dedicated to my method and to promote um, the good birth experience by uh, enabling uh, mothers and f fathers into uh, coping with birth and also educating students, midwife students. So, um, this is the Maya method. It's um, it's actually a very simple technique. It's um, it's it's a technique where where you use your hands and you make this series of calm deep pressures down the woman's body in an asymmetrical pattern, uh, focusing on the depth and the rhythm of your uh, of this uh, series, and you will promote the grounding effect. It is also uh, possible to modulate the pain expression and send the woman into the parasympathetic state of mind, which promotes the secretion of hormones. So the Maya method is a technique which you use when the woman starts her contraction. So uh, you are on her body, 
helping her relax and focus on these uh, points. So when you use the Maya method, you can uh, lessen the pain perception and promote the progression of birth. Um, <clears throat> end up developing a method and it was actually a, a series of events that developed. my first birth was a very traumatic experience with an particular position of the body delaying the progress and i had hours and hours of stimulation and the artificial contractions were just hailing my body and giving me no pauses and just extreme pain uh, my mind just ran off with me and uh, I couldn't cope with the power of the birth at all. At one point, a midwife commented on my tense face and she pressed her very cold thumb right into my forehead, just above the nose to kind of ease out the tension in my forehead. And I immediately felt a relief, but she was gone again and I wasn't able to ask her to continue. So I didn't actually get any more of that uh, amazing relaxation and so I was just left to cope with the Entonax and the mask and it wasn't much of a help um, it sent me off to a horrible after uh, postnatal depression afterwards and uh, I really had to struggle to find my path uh, again and getting ready for my second birth and my second birth was in a public hospital in Hong Kong and it was a totally different uh, intense experience they uh, ruptured my membranes and I had uh, when I had just passed my due date one day or something. And right away I got intense contractions and I had really dealt with the trauma from the first birth and I had healed my fear and I felt like I was ready to trust this birth. But the doctors and the midwives just kept interfering, trying to make me accept uh, medicine and interventions. So I got so confused and fearful again. At only four centimeters, I was just overwhelmed uh, by the power of my body. So I was totally also stressed out by um, the medical staff's interruptions. So at one point, I actually pretended. And at that mo moment, when I got away from the disturbances, I got in contact with myself and my own inner control, just telling my body to let go and relax. And I actually convinced my body to open up while I had a control. And I continued to do that uh, over the next few contractions and I could literally just feel how my son was descending and after only five or something, five contractions, I actually gave birth to a 4.25 kilo big baby. They had never seen anything like this in Hong Kong. <laughs> so these two births gave me my own, uh, gave me an understanding on of how pressure points and mental focus were key concepts for coping and how you can uh, minimize pain perception by getting in control uh, in this inner control but the problem was that the the way i was handled in both of my births i was actually taken out of the inner control and into a uh, an interaction with the, the medical staff so this gave me a lot of inspiration. And when I became a midwife student, I started using these deep pressure points to direct the women away from the pain and into this deep relaxation. And right away, I could tell how much difference it meant, not only to the pain uh, perception, but also uh, to the progress in birth. And this is now 10 years ago, and the technique has been my best tool ever since. So I want to get right into uh, uh, explaining what this technique is. It is a coping and pain relief technique based on three mechanisms, as you can see on the slide right now. It mobilizes, uh, mobilizes the central nervous system to induce this parasympathetic hormone flow by sending the woman into the inner control where she's really in, engaged in uh, deep, deep focus. And then you have the psychological pain, uh, no, the physiological pain modulation, which is enhanced by these deep pressure points. They are not uh, acupuncture, uh, 
they are uh, not uh, based on medians, but it's um, based on gate control theory, which I will explain later on. And they are, all of them, a physical uh, deep pressure, which is more like um, a double pressure. So you will grab hold of the woman's uh, body and then uh, pressure her down into the, um, the bed and the ground underneath, which promotes this grounding sensation. And then you also have the psychological pain modulation, modulation which is based on hypnosis. Um, so when you use the technique, you also talk to the woman at the same time, directing her mind into a mental um, focus. So this means that this uh, technique is a fast track into relaxation and the trance, which is what I call the Maya mind. Um, you will ha get a lot of help from um, the partner or the midwife who's using the technique on the birthing woman. Um, the birthing woman will feel um, that she's not alone with the responsibility of uh, coping. And she's more able to let go of her body while somebody else is taking over her body. So she can actually just focus on the focus points, the pressures, and she can feel the grounding, body scanning, relaxation. And also this technique helps her time her contractions. So when we start the contraction, we are um, uh, just using our own rhythm down over the body. And when we are at the, the feet, we are, have used almost 30 seconds, and then we're going back up again to the, um, the, the woman's forehead. And then we help her take a deep sigh to get out of the contraction, just make a deep pressure on her shoulder to really ground her after the contraction. So the functions of the method is fixation, pain inhibition, birth promotion, because when you are this relaxed, while you have a contraction, the body is uh, able to let go of the baby, then the baby will have a better um, contact with the uterus mouth and you will open up, uh, dilate quicker. So it works as a grounding body scanning timer, as I just said. So why is birth painful? That's a good question. And I just want to just dwell on it a little bit because we all know that fear creates tension, which results in pain. That's the basic of childbirth pain. So do we think about how much we actually connect birth and pain and how much this influence our perception of the birth sensation? Because when we um, integrate pain as a as a um, as a true story of birth we actually make a great impact on how the woman is um, interpreting the sensation of birth power and the contractions they are actually not meant to be painful. No normal functions of our body is meant to be painful as long as we cooperate with the function of the normal pro process. But if we do tense up while having sex, it's painful too. And if we have complications, bodily functions like going to the toilet can get painful too. So in childbirth, birth, we also need to separate the two concepts, the normal birth and the complicated one. The normal birth has a normal progress, has breaks and pauses in between the contractions, and the woman is helped by hormones to promote coping, endorphins inducing the trance and relaxation. And when this happens, the uterus, the uterus actually gets what it needs and it doesn't have to send pain signals. If we look at the uterus, it doesn't have any nerves uh, in, in the whole body of the uterus, only in the mouth of the uterus. So the uterus only um, um, uh, is it, it, the, the uterus is only uh, made of layers, and it's um, uh, a layer of muscle tissue going in the longitudinal way, and uh, 
horizontal layer of muscles and then the blood veins. And as long as the uterus gets what it's what it needs, it's actually uh, capable of uh, resetting in between every contraction, just like the heart. The slippery muscle tissue is uh, so beautifully uh, capable of having a contraction and then uh, resetting and getting ready for the next contraction and with no need of um, um, building up acid and creating pain. So what creates pain is when we don't cooperate with the, the normal function of the body of the uterus. So when we tense up, we, um, we stop the blood flow to the uterus and then we get less oxygen, we build up lactate and then we just um, get acid in the uterus and then it's actually really capable of creating extreme pain. So um, what is really important to understand is that when we work with the normal uh, function of the birth, we actually only have uh, three levels of contractions. So it's possible to keep the power of the birth um, in 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 all is what I would say. It's 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 possible to control the power of the birth and not just have this sensation of birth getting worse and worse and worse. So this is where I want to jump right into my next slide. So to show you the three concepts of why this method is working. Um, so the, the most important thing is to be able to get out of the contractions. So if we talk about these four levels of contractions, which is actually more um, uh, dependent on the length of the contraction than on the power. So when the contract is uh, around one minute to one and a half minute long, you will have the maximum power of the contraction as well. And if you don't manage to get out of the contraction and resetting the contraction, if you have like very, very long contractions and your breathing technique and your uh, tension is not allowing your body to resetting, then you'll just build on top of that with the next contraction. So that is what I call the pain ladder that is actually creating false pain in labor. So it's totally uh, necessary to help the woman get to the contraction and breathing and relax during the contraction. It's even more important to help her get out of the contraction so that she's able to uh, reset and get ready and keep the pain ladder away and just having what is normal bodily contractions, which is just meant to be a tightening of the uterus. But in order to do that, she has to be in control of her body and the, the, um, the interaction with the contraction, but also over her mind. And that's what I have tried to show you on the Maya mind picture, which is not translated. So it's a little bit difficult for you to read, but I can explain that inside of this circle, you have focus, the trance, the Maya mind. This is where a woman has to be. She needs to be in focus, breathing and relaxation. And then the midwife or the partner should build a safe house around this state of mind. And she should, uh, the midwife or the partner can help her get back into this if the woman loses control. So every time she gets out of this focus, she gets into her head in the outer control. She's up in her in her analytic head. And when she's in her head, the birthing woman, when she's in her head, she is sens sensing the birth much more painful than when she's just down in her body into this parasympathetic um, state of mind then she can um, just disappear away from the pain focus and into the coping focus instead. So pain actually happens when the woman loses control of her cope, coping. And uh, this is where I 
is the, the Maya technique to help uh, help her stay in the coping state of mind, which I called Maya mind. So as you can see on these pictures, uh, this is a beautiful couple, Maria and Hans, who um, I helped out birthing, uh, birth their second child. And Maria was extremely fearful of childbirth, but we kept her mental focus by giving her lots of uh, Maya pressures. And you can also use the Maya pressures separately, just use focusing on the pressure in the forehead, which is the glabella pressure. And you can also focus on hands or, or feet, or you can use the whole technique, which helps her time the condition. So this is a slide which just very quickly helps me take you through the understanding of the two nervous the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So it's it's um, incredibly important to understand when a woman is in her sympathetic nervous system, she is in her brain. She's analyzed and she's trying she's trying to stay informed and and she's trying to interact with the 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 midwife and getting lots of information and all of that. But system is not helping her uh, promote all of these uh, good hormones which will help her get into um, the flow of the birth so we want to help her get into the parasympathetic uh, activity where we can uh, really see how much effect it has on the progress of birth and the pain perception as well so if we talk about pain, uh, I want to take you through a little bit of the pain theories that is uh, describing why the Maya method is working, because it all goes together. The more we know about pain, the better we can cope and the less pain we will actually experience. But um, this is actually very new science. For 350 years, we have had a biomedical pain model up until 1977. And from, for that many years, we thought that pain was um, transcending from the, the, you can see like on this picture from the foot, you burn your foot and then you uh, an ascending a pain signal from the bottom and up to the brain. And that's what we thought for so many years, that the pain signal was de dependent on how much you burned yourself or you hurt yourself. But then in 1977, they started this new um, understanding where they realized that the pain signal is actually coming from the brain and going down to the, the wounded uh, body part. Sorry, I just have to. Hi, we've just lost Heidi for a moment. So I'm just going to get her back. But um, hang in there, everybody. So Heidi's connection dropped there and she'll be logging back in. So just hang on because this was just, um, well, it's all been wonderfully interesting, um, but we were just getting to the real meaty bits of understanding pain. So stay in there. And Heidi will be back any moment.
Hi there, I'm back in. <laughs> Sorry. About Super. That. Wonderful to have you back. Disconnected. No worries. Okay. I'm just going to unmute. Okay. So I guess I'm back. Yes, I am. Back. I hope you can all hear me again. So uh, I was just asking you through the pain uh, signs that is. Um, um, explaining why the Maya method is so efficient and just getting to the uh, describing how the brain is actually the pain uh, mother of pain so the brain is uh, controlling how much pain we need for for to yeah actually to understand pain we need to understand that pain is a very good um, in our body that helps us uh, uh, navigate in, in life and uh, helps us uh, to to uh, to take measures that uh, makes us not not do the same uh, mistakes again itself and to stop us using an arm that is harmed or is a good mechanism and the brain is there to help us uh, learn from the pain so when we are i'll just the next slide i'll tell you about the the new pain model that came in 1977 it was this biopsychosocial pain model understand the brain as a mother of pain and we 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 now understand that the. Um, I'll just have to see what uh, Karen is writing to me. Okay, so we now understand that the signal comes to the brain, and then the brain has to understand what kind of signal came from our body, the bio, and how do we feel about it in our psyche, and what is going on in the social part of our environment, and then depending on whether the brain feels safe or, or, um, or vulnerable, we will create a, um, a level of pain to make us react. So, um, so that means that the brain is creating the pain and we need to control the brain and control the body to be able to influence the pain that's what i want to say and i have to take care of the time here so just quickly which is um very simple understanding that the sharp measures measures of pain they travel in the narrow nerves in the body so when we stimulate the wider nerves we can actually uh, block the ga gateway to the brain because the brain can only take one um one action at a time and when we stimulate the the widened uh, nerves go faster to the brain than the narrow ones and that means when we stimulate the the body's wide nerves we can uh, block the pain so when we stimulate that it could be by touch pressure vibration massage cold and heat we know we use all of this already just intuitively when we work with pain but when we know that it works we can actually enhance that um, effect and that is why it's so important to go pain again <laughs> we have to um, understand that the more we trust our body the more secure we feel the less pain we will feel. And yet, um, we will get a lot of psychological pain if we don't trust what we feel. So, I'll just take you to the next one. My method is on promoting focus and of safety and control by mental strategies, visualization, and deep pressure points. So what we do when we use the technique is we, we guide the woman's um, mental state. We guide by talking to her in a very 
easy dominant uh, hypnotic way. It's um, just to keep her, her the focus of pain. So we will always engage the the breathing. So when I use the Maya method, I will start by pressing my thumb down into her forehead, and then I'll engage her into the breathing. So that would sound like this. I would tell her, um, please take a deep breath in through your nose and blow out through your mouth. Make sure that your out breath is longer than your intake. Take a deep breath in again and then just follow your breath down through your body, only focusing on how I'm touching you and where I'm touching you. Um, keep track of where I'm touching you and just let go of your body, relaxing and trusting, and then just follow my path and rhythm down through your body. And when I get down to her feet, I will tell her maybe to wiggle her left toe the and then back up to the uh, right thumb and then the left pinky <laughs> and then back down to the left big toe. So I'll just tell her where to focus and keep track of her mind so it doesn't run off with her. And then when we get back up to her forehead, the this series of pressure points have taken around, have lasted one minute so it's time to get out of the contraction and it doesn't matter if the contraction is still there we will uh, gain a lot from trying to get out earlier than, um, um, than the contraction so we will just tell her to take a deep breath in and then sigh out <sighs> And then keep her down, pushing on her shoulder, holding a big pause in between the, the breaths. And then tell her to do it one more time. Take a deep, deep breath. In. And then let go of your body with a big sigh. And then she's reset. Actually, it's that simple. She will follow your lead and she will use the pressure points to understand where to, how to get into that relaxation. So in order to, to use this technique, um, we need to make um, an, a partner agreement. Um, it's just a simple uh, fun of uh, trust in between the two working together. So when I engage with this very sound technique, very dumb uh, talking, guiding of her mental state, I always make sure that we have um, a fallback, which is the, the partner agreement. So I tell her it's very difficult for me to, to read how you like what I'm doing because women, birthing women, they don't talk much. <laughs> they, but they're very good at saying no. So this is what I tell her. If you don't like what I'm doing, just say no and then actively say no. And then uh, I will try something else. And that Make me feel more confident when I'm working this close with the woman. I can um, I can help her, and I can try my things. And then, if not answering, not saying anything, then it means I can continue. And then it, I'm <laughs> trying something else. So, yeah, that's um, it. The Maya method. It, ha it has a very uh, Maybe you can try your uh, way around it. You go on um, my Instagram and see the videos on my YouTube. Uh, but it's very simple. Make sure that the woman is lying here in her um, first position, which is uh, this um, semi prone position. No, not semi prone. What is it called? Like uh, half sitting, half lying position. Uh, arrange her like this and make her accept and agree to just two contractions trying to follow your lead. Then do the basic points and then use the control the way you talked to her to um, enhance the relaxation of the brain. And 
then you are on trying with this uh, technique you can uh, this technique you can within two contractions show her how cooperation and relaxation and breathing uh, can help her uh, influence the pain perception so i guess that's it Gina. i think we need some time for questions as well Thank you so much, Heidi. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation and really interesting to midwives and birth workers and um, members of the public who, um, you know, especially pregnant moms. So, um, yes, thank you very, very much thank for that. Thank you so much, Kim. It was really fascinating and wonderful hearing the different and certainly how you came to, to this, you know, through your own experience as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going through to see if there are any other questions. Um, Angela asked to post a link to the Instagram, which I see has already been done. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> That's one of and, my uh, midwife students posting it. That's so amazing. They're so dedicated to the method. It's amazing. And they're also asking if there's an English version of your book or your resources. Probably not yet. Not yet. I'm working on that, uh, but I I need to get in contact with someone who's um, yeah who can help me get um, yeah book. And what is it do you called? find it easy to adapt this method to women who are not being caseloaded? Does caseloaded mean, Karen? Um, so those who are under supervision, like under the hospital, and um, who are in the hospital environment. Um, this technique is very helpful for all environments, I say, and I think it's extremely easy to implement because you can you can just ask the woman if, if we can try this relaxation technique for just two contractions. So she only has to try it out for two minutes and then she sees the results. So I use it in a birthing clinic, I use it when I do home birth, and I use it a lot in the hospital because uh, fear creates so much more pain. So in the hospital, this technique is really efficient. Absolutely. Mm. And they don't need they don't need a lot of education. What I usually do is I just introduce them to the understanding of the pain ladder, and then the uterus normal bodily function. So so when they understand that we just need to give the uterus what it's meant to have. Um, they are very um, uh, cooperative and uh, they, they just don't know how to get there. You know, when you have a birthing woman and she's, she's uh, under influence of all this uh, impact of the contractions and the power in her body just taking her away. And when you tell her to breathe, she's like, okay, what do you think I'm trying to? And if you tell her to relax, she's like, how, how do I relax? I can I cannot even find my shoulders. I don't know where my body is in this um, <clears throat> rage of my of power. So when you impact her, when you touch her at the same time, um, then she knows where to go in her body. And a lot of women don't want to be touched during childbirth, and they don't want to lie down. They want to walk around and just hope. Uh, very lonely but what they realize is that I can help them cope and I can actually help them lie down and relax so that they can sleep in between the contractions and then their body will work much better because they can rest and gain um, power for the later on for the push absolutely mm. just that that ability to be able to rest and yeah. somebody is asking if there's any contraindication for using this method. Well, it's it's only working on natural relief and relaxation and breathing. So it, um, I don't think there's any um, um, any harm uh, possible. But I I do then I, I do uh, underline the importance of. Uh, the position, which I don't remember what it's called in English. Uh, somebody actually wrote it uh, somewhere, uh, recumbent position, the semi-recumbent position. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if, if she's lying too flat on her, on her back, 
you can actually get a little bit the same uh, effect as the epidural. So when you when you have a very tense and she gets in this kind of relaxation while she's contracting, uterus can kind of get heavy on the veins in the back, and she can um, uh, have this vena cava uh, symptom. Uh, so, of course, it's very important that she's lying um, with her back raised a little bit um, so that um, um, the blood so is effective. compromised. Yeah. Yes. Now, there's another question here um, from Natalie asking if you find that in the hospital birthing environment that the other midwives and medical staff are positive in giving you the space to work with women using this technique. So what has your experience of that been? I find that I get a lot of support towards this technique. Um, in Denmark, it's been, it's the interest in my technique has been increasing. I developed this technique in 2009 and I used it throughout the years uh, so so much just for myself and until I realized I could give it to the power and then I understood that this was a, a very easy and universal technique which is easy to take on so it's it's actually just basic uh, cycle pr prophylax uh, but it's it's made so uh, and easy to apply to them to the woman and to the partner so I find that it's uh, helping me a lot in, um, in, in to promote the natural birth and to uh, prevent interventions. I usually, I, I don't often have uh, health, pain medication uh, and augmentation uh, of my birth because I can help the woman understand the birth much easier by using this technique. Uh, so you mentioned course, um, talking about the normal birth by this. Yeah. Yes, but you mentioned psychoprophylax, and that's actually one of the questions um, asking mm -hmm. if there's any difference between psychoprophylax and the Mayo method. That's one of the questions. Or is psychoprophylax just a um, term that's used to describe these different modalities that are included? Yeah, it's actually a really uh, question because this once before uh, by an older midwife and she was like what is the difference because because it's just cycle prophylax and I was like okay how do you how do you explain cycle prophylax to the to the partner and how do you make him engage into this and this is where this technique is so simple and easy to apply and it, it's um, also a very um, efficient kind of psychoprophylax because you are using the three mechanisms, the biopsychosocial uh, mechanisms at the same time. So you're setting in on the pain um, perception by making the body and the mind cooperate with the, the partner or the midwife at the same time so the woman doesn't feel alone in coping. And so I would say that this uh, technique is different by, uh, because it's also using the gate control very efficiently. So when you are using these Maya pressures, these double pressures, you are actually um, really grabbing hold of the woman's attention and really grounding her in a dominant way. So it's a very hands-on psychoprophylax. That's what I will say. That, that explains it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, um, one last question, and then we will have to wrap up. And that was just because it was asked a while ago. Um, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this really in a, a short space of time. But um, they're asking if you can juggle the Mayo method and documentation as well as other hospital policies. Um, but I think so probably, I think, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so what it actually gives me more time to um, to to juggle the 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 uh, what is it called the the, the journal, documents uh, and the policies. Yeah, the documentation because when I 
this technique. I, I use it only for a few minutes to engage the partner and then I get more time to document as well. So uh, sometimes I have spent hours working on the woman because she's getting so uh, dependent on this help because it's so efficient. But then I can still write my notes in the breaks because she's much more efficiently uh, getting breaks, uh, pauses in between the contractions where she's actually sleeping and resting. So this this a uh, technique often I often see that um, when you have like a storm of contractions just hailing in over the woman, when I use this technique, I get her back into a normal uh, pattern of contractions, which gets much more more efficient. And then I have time to to document and stuff. And off in Denmark, we have a lot of amazing fathers to be who actually really wants to have an, uh, uh, a space in birth where they can do something. So for me, this is my best tool to let them have the, this amazing experience with being together on birth. And will you be offering a course to teach the Maya method or do you offer a course? I do. Um, I, I do right now in in, in my teach uh, all uh, my private clients here, uh, and I also do an issue. Um, I I'm working on making uh, an online uh, English um, course, but I don't think it will be ready until maybe within a few months, maybe. Wonderful. Um, one last question, and then we will be be closing up. Um, but somebody looked at your Instagram and saw images of uh, using it on babies. Um, <laughs> it's so if you can just answer that briefly. Technique, yeah. It's it's just you know you you should just try it. You uh, you will feel how grounding uh, you will get by just one minute. Uh, one of my friends they uh, that I tried it on. She's um, been using a lot of mindfulness and meditation uh, to cope with stress and anxiety. And I, I gave her this technique in one minute and she was like, wow, you just got me in the same place as 20 minutes of meditation does. And this is just a very, uh, uh, it's very um, calm and nice technique and you can use it on babies and children too uh, in a less, um, powerful way uh, to just enhance enhance relaxation before um, as a as a sleep association and and they just love it when you intru introduce this they get a, a a sense of their whole body which grounds them and and they get more relaxed and can easily uh, accept uh, going into sleep and yeah, so I use it on everybody who allows me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Heidi, that's absolutely wonderful.